Hey guys, it's Mark again, uh, ready for a new subject. We're gonna talk a little bit more about teachers and coaches. I mentioned on the last video the idea of deliberate practice and the fourth step of deliberate practice being find somebody who has, um, who has the experience of where you wanna go and get feedback from them. And more often than not, this is some kind of a coach or a teacher. And so I wanna go a little bit more into teachers because I think there's a lot of sensitivity around teachers um, when I've been re when I've read books about you know people who don't believe that they can do something, a lot of times they can point to a certain teacher in their past that kind of discouraged them, told them they couldn't do it, and um, or they're you know they're real disciplinarians or different styles didn't didn't mesh. So lots of different reasons why uh, somebody might have given up on their creativity in the past, and unfortunately a lot of that has to do with a particular teacher or something. I think one of the reasons why a lot of people uh, get discouraged when they're trying to do their creativity and a teacher and the student don't work very well is because um, the student might not have learned the way that the teacher wanted to teach. Uh, you know, there's sort of a, almost like a vicious circle where the people that are able to to learn through the teaching method that they're taught, they're the ones that go forward and they become the teachers. And uh, only a certain limited method uh, starts to move forward through this series of teachers. And if you can't learn that particular way, you'll basically be out of that, uh, you know, that line. And so, and those people won't become, uh, you know, the creators and the teachers because they didn't, they dropped out, they, they gave up. And so uh, it's sort of this vicious circle that the only thing that's being taught is kind of like this narrow band. And um, that's not always true, but, but that can definitely be one of the cases that can, that can cause the problems. Over the years, I've had some experiences with different teachers, uh, particularly in music, uh, which tends to be kind of a stereotype, I think, of, of the, you know, the teacher that uh, kind of discourages the student because it's like, if you can't pick it up fast enough, you're out. And in fact, my friend was literally told by somebody that he had no rhythm. That is so unfair and unfortunate that a teacher had thought that they had the right to tell somebody something like that because that's definitive and it's not true. My friend became a poet and a harmonica player who has perfect rhythm now but he didn't have it at the time and he was basically dismissed at the moment. And that's just not fair. So if anybody ever did that to you, they were limited in their belief system and that has nothing to do with you and what you're capable of doing. I think that's an example where it was more like the teacher had different motivations than the student. You know, the teacher, almost like I've seen this in schools where the program is more important than the individuals that are learning. And it's more about winning awards and being recognized as a great conductor as the teacher than it is to actually help the students become good musicians or learn, understand what they're doing versus just make noise based on these pieces of, you know, these, these four or five dots. It's like, you know, what am I learning? I just, I've learned rote memory as opposed to what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. And so I think that's one, another example of teachers that really are focused on the wrong things versus teaching you how to actually learn how to do something. And I don't mean to suggest that that's necessarily wrong, it's just maybe not aligned with your motivations and why you want to learn something. And so like if, you know, some students definitely, they just picked it up quickly, they liked to do what the, paper, what the music told them, they didn't even necessarily understand it, and they just wanted to be a part of something bigger and make great music together. Fine, awesome, but not necessarily gonna teach you how to, how to make music until later down the road. But by then you've been discouraged because you didn't want to do that right away. Similarly, I had a first guitar teacher and basically all she did was she wrote the tablature for a song during the time I was with her. So I wasn't actually playing music with her to learn whether or not to do something right or wrong. She was literally spending the time writing music I could have gotten from a book. So the motivation might have helped people be able to do that and that's what they wanted to do. So it aligned with them, but not with where I was at. On a completely different note, I had a second teacher that I was introduced to through a friend to try out, and this person just was just too weird for me. Um, I think that they could teach somebody how to play music, uh, but I was not uh, comfortable with it. Um, for example, they were very proud of the fact that they could have perfect pitch, they could understand any note by the fact that they had learned to associate their tongue on their tooth with the right note. So they would literally hear a note and put their tongue on a particular tooth and wait for Pavlov's classical, classical conditioning to, to associate any song. So they could literally feel their teeth 
while listening to music. I had zero interest in doing anything remotely close to that. So sometimes you just don't align with where they're coming from. The last example of a guitar teacher I had that we just didn't jive well was, was really about taste. Um, you know, truth be told, I, I'm, I really loved uh, hard rock in the 80s and 90s uh, and 70s, guitar rock and classic rock, and I'm pretty sure he liked bluegrass uh, or jazz, a few different kinds of jazz. And it just was pretty clear the chords that he was having me learn were not interesting to me. He was having me learn songs like children's songs, like Jimmy Crack Corn, and I, I don't care. Uh, it just boring stuff that I was I had no interest in. And then when I talked about my stuff, he he called my music square. I mean, what, daddy -o? I mean, it, we just did not get along well in terms of taste. So very important to find somebody who aligns with your taste. So hopefully those examples didn't scare you. Uh, it was really more to recognize, you know, teachers are they're individuals and some will align with you and some won't. Some will have the same taste as you, some won't. But it's really important to find a teacher who believes that you are able to learn. And that, and that is willing to listen to your goals and understand where you want to go and is able to be a great communicator to help you uh, understand concepts and learn the way that will help you learn. And so, you know, don't be afraid to look at a couple of different teachers and make sure that they align with your tastes and your motivations and your goals and those kinds of things. So again, it's sort of self-directed learning, but with the help of a coach who can help take you to the next level and give you feedback on where you're at and how to be able to move forward. I do have one caveat though, and that is if you want to learn what the teacher wants to teach, if you know that they're great and you know that they're amazing or that they've taught somebody else and they, you, know, you see the path that they can take you on and you're willing to do it their way, that's great. You know, as adults, it gets easier to be able to you know, recognize uh, you know, delaying gratification and being willing to do things that we might not wanna do in order to get to that place. Awesome. But, uh, you know, that's your choice and you're in control. 